Mob farms. At some point when you're playing Vault Hunters, you're probably going to need to build a mob farm. And there's two really good options for this. Ice Spawners and Cagerium. But which one is going to be the best one for you? Well, today we're going to be looking at the pros and cons of each one, doing a few comparisons, and seeing which one I would recommend based on what you actually need it for. And a huge thank you to Jay for helping me out with all the config stuff with this one. It's been extremely helpful, and hopefully it'll help me with some future videos as well. So let's start with Cagerium, because that is the brand new mob farming mod introduced in 1.18. It comes in three unique flavors you have the passive mobs which you need a mob terrarium for hostile mobs which you need a mob cage for and finally boss mobs need a binding plate now the great thing is this is pretty much all you need to be able to get this farm up and running you need one of these mob generating blocks and a chest underneath doesn't have to be a double chest I just like the extra storage. So let's start out with the terrarium. Now, the great thing about the terrarium is it's actually fairly cheap. All it requires is a vault meat block, which is just nine of the vault meat, a few glass and three binding wood plates. And those are made just using four chromatic steel each and a perfect Laramar, which might seem quite expensive early game. But as you progress through the mod pack, that's not going to be that crazy, especially given how powerful this is. Now, a quick disclaimer here, we have have animal pens in the game now which does reduce the value of the terrarium significantly however the terrarium is fully automatic whereas the animal pens are not so that's where the benefit of this comes in if you don't want to be dealing with constantly feeding and then killing animals you can just use the terrarium now how you use this fairly straightforward all you need to do is use a spawn egg on the terrarium so just right click it in and you will see that the sheep has gone into the terrarium cage and over time it will gather the passive drops from that mob in the chest underneath so we've got some wool and some mutton from the sheep now this can be stacked up to four times and that will quadruple the output that you get from the terrarium now of course there's a really big downside to this and that is that you need four sheep spawn eggs if you want to make a terrarium with four sheep in it. And while spawn eggs are fairly common in the late game, they are not that common in the early game, especially before level 21 when you start getting them in living chests. And the other really big downside to this as well is if you want to get those sheep out and use the terrarium for something else, well, you can't. At least not without crafting a special item and that item is this skeleton key and that requires two perfect laramar two diamonds and a mystery egg and that wouldn't be too bad at all except for one really big problem when you use the skeleton key it removes one of the mobs but the skeleton key breaks so you need to make one of those every time you want to change anything around in the terrarium now this is important for when we look at ice spawners later on. On the plus side though, you can add some grass to make the sheep nice and happy and then stick the other sheep back in and it will still passively generate all of those materials for you. Now probably the strongest feature for Cagerium is the fact that you can replicate the farm very very easily. If you're finding that this isn't quite cutting it, you can just make another terrarium, stick another grass block in and then add another four sheep and that has doubled the size of your farm very, very quickly and very compactly. Theoretically, you could have hundreds of these about and they would all keep going as long as these chunks remain loaded, then you can just keep them running forever. And the great thing as well is I've come over here to world spawn and you can see that it has been generating constantly. So if you're on a single player world or you're on a server where you're allowed to build in spawn, then this is a really good idea because this farm is going to be running all the time even when you're not around because all it requires is for these chunks to be loaded and of course spawn chunks are always loaded now let's be honest no one is taking cagerium to build some sheep pens what everyone is interested in is the hostile mob farms and in order to build a hostile mob farm you're going to need this item the mob cage now the mob cage is significantly more expensive than the terrarium you're going to need a lot of chromatic steel as well as some black chromatic steel and a extraordinary laramar so that is much more expensive than the terrarium however it's not so absurdly expensive that it puts this completely out of reach of the average player. 
but this mod cage functions pretty much exactly the same as the terrarium does. You simply right click it with a spawn egg and you can stack up to four of the hostile mobs in here. Now just in case you don't know how to get the hostile mob eggs, all you need to do is get a normal mystery egg and use four eternal souls and four volt essence on it and that'll turn it into a mystery hostile egg which you then just roll and it'll give you a random hostile mob egg. Fairly straightforward and there are a bunch of different spawn eggs that you can get. Some of my favourite include the witch, the pillager and the classic skeleton like the one behind me because for some reason I'm always short of bones. Not sure why, it just happens a lot. Now these will generate resources exactly the same as the sheep did, but this time you will get arrows and bones. Now there's something that you need to be aware of regarding these as well. These roll using the default player kill loot table, which means that at the time of recording there are some things that don't quite work properly. The two biggest examples of these are magma cubes because they only spawn the tiny versions which do not produce any magma cream at all and also the ender dragon which we will get to in a second. As I've said throughout the video it is alpha so there is a good chance that they will get this fixed at some point in the future but right now it is not quite working as intended. Now the binding plate works pretty much the same as the terrarium and the mob cage it's just used for boss mobs instead of regular mobs. So we're talking things like the ender dragon, the wither and the elder guardian. In fact the elder guardian is actually one of the better mobs to be putting on here because it gives you access to wet sponges and sponges can be an absolute pain to get. So being able to use this mod to get the sponges passively is going to be pretty huge. Now if you want a quick breakdown of exactly how many resources this generates, it's fairly simple. Every 70 seconds the passive mobs generate, every 90 seconds the hostile mobs generate and then every 210 seconds the boss mobs generate. So Cagerium is absolutely fantastic for a very small mob farm that will just constantly generate your resources whether you're around or not if you chunk load it and it can produce a lot of items over a long period of time. But now let's look at ice spawners because ice spawners does a very different job. So welcome to my ice spawners setup. This is just a little thing that I've thrown together fairly quickly just for demonstration purposes. Now this thing here is the key to everything. This is your survival spawner and that is what you need to get started with ice spawners. Now chances are when you watch this video this recipe is going to be wrong because they are changing the recipe to make it more expensive. They're talking mainly black chromatic steel by the sounds of it. Currently the biggest problem that you're going to run into is getting this cage dust because you have a 1 in 10 chance of getting a cage dust every time you break a spawner. And you're going to need 32 cage dust so you're going to need to break like 320 spawners in order to be able to make just one survival spawner. And that can take some time especially if your luck isn't bang on the drop rate so this is definitely more of a mid game item because even if you get lucky you're still going to need to farm all of that cage dust but that being said it is absolutely worth using all you need to do for this one is just right click it and put in a spawn egg so you can just put a skeleton spawn egg in and really 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 importantly this spawn egg never dies and you can remove it and put a new one in and just change these over as much as you want absolutely no problems which is an absolute huge improvement over cagerium because it gives you so much more flexibility and you're only going to need to build one spawner instead of an absolute ton of the mob cages. So with this one you can set it to either always be on or to be on when a redstone signal is put into the spawner. So if we activate this redstone signal now what you'll see is just mobs starting to spawn and they spawn very very quickly. It's approximately four mobs every two seconds. Now as you can see this is an absolute ton of mobs that are spawning in but there's one really big downside. If you want to make this efficient you're going to want to have at least one other mod that's going to allow you to kill and move mobs quickly. My favourite for this is Dark Utilities. Dark Utilities is extremely cheap so it's not too much of a problem but that is something that you don't need with Cagerium. And on top of that 
these mobs will only spawn if you are within 128 blocks. So if you get too far away from the spawner, it's just going to stop. However, ice spawners have become much, much, much more viable since the last patch because the distance used to be 16 blocks, whereas now 128 blocks means you can essentially put a bunch of ice spawners underneath your base and just let it run forever. Now, another great thing about the ice spawners as well is that it ignores spawning conditions. So normally, Drown needs some water to be able to spawn properly with a normal vanilla spawner. This time, they don't. They'll just spawn absolutely normally here, no issues at all. Same with things like Guardians, although Guardians can be a little bit crazy. They need a little bit more of a custom setup in order to kill them properly, because otherwise they'll just keep bouncing into the walls. Although this does give me a very good opportunity to point out that if you have too many mobs nearby, it will stop spawning those mobs. So it reaches a cap about 16 mobs and then it will just not spawn anymore. Just be aware of that when you're building your farm and plan accordingly. Now one final thing to mention before we start getting into our rate comparisons is that you can have multiple ice spawners in the same chunk. So essentially all you do is put down another spawner and you can do this multiple times. Stick in spawn eggs will go for chicken and vindicator and then activate the redstone signal and you will see that you've got chickens, skeletons, and vindicators all going at once without too much of a problem. But obviously, make sure you block the top off as you would do with the normal spawner. But there you go, a very simple, compact farm that you can make. It's not as compact, but it's definitely more productive. But how much more productive? You know what, we're going to turn that off because the sounds are driving me crazy. Well, let's do a simple skeleton test. What we will do is empty all of these out of here. And I think to make it fair, we will do two sets of four skeletons in here because that offsets the increased cost. So let's run both of these for an hour and see what resources we get. Now, while that's running, let me just quickly remind you to hit that subscribe button down below. And if you do want to support the channel even further, do consider joining our Cobalt crew. It is our channel memberships. You get access to the Sum of the Mod server. You get special Discord icons and you get some cool chat stuff to use while we do the live streams. It really helps me out and will make my dream of being a full-time content creator a reality much sooner. Anyway, enough self-promo. Let's go and check on the results. So that is our hour up. Let us turn off the spawner and I wait for these last few to die. And there we go. That's all shut down nicely. So first up, let's check on Kjerium and see what we got. So looking at this, with the eight spawn eggs, we got five and a little bit stacks of bones. So that's 337 bones within the hour, plus just under that in arrows. So that's not too bad, especially given that this is just going to run constantly whenever you are in your base. So yeah, not too shabby at all. But now let's go and check what ice spawners did. Oh, yeah. Ice spawners uh, kind of blasted that out of the park a little bit. Bear in mind, we only used one spawn egg and we can literally go and grab that again if we need to. And we didn't kill them manually. This is just a standard player damage trap. And we got close to 7,000 bones and again, close to 7,000 arrows. So that is actually a little bit insane. And what we could do if we were happy with all of those bones is just go and switch the egg out and then make a new farm. So it turns out that ice spawners is 20 times faster than two mob cages. So 40 times faster than one mob cage or 160 times faster per egg. So what does this mean? Well, let's go outside and I will give you a breakdown. So let's look at the benefits of both of these mods. First up, Cagerium. It is cheaper to make the spawner, meaning you can get it earlier game. And on top of that, it doesn't rely on any other mods, meaning that you don't need to waste any knowledge points. It's also much smaller, meaning that you can fit more of them in a small area and those farms can be chunk loaded, meaning that you don't even need to be around to be gathering those resources. And finally, it makes farming bosses much, much easier because having to deal with a bunch of withers in your base 
is not something anyone wants to do. Now, what about Ice Spawners? Because Ice Spawners absolutely destroyed Cagerium on the quantity test. Well, that's the main benefit. Ice Spawners is going to give you a lot more resources, both in terms of the amount that you get per hour and the amount that you get per resource that you put into it, namely the Spawn Eggs. Also, it's massively customizable. You can use other mods like Dark Utilities or like Create in order to fully automate everything and make sure you're getting the maximum amount of kills and drops per hour. You can also do a manual mode as well and kill the mobs yourself if you'd want to, but given how many items you get, probably not worth doing unless you want to gain hundreds of levels like I have in just this last hour. So there you have it. Cagerium, much better for an earlier game, completely AFK style, but if you're looking for raw numbers and more efficiency, then Ice Spawners is 100% the one to get. And I know I will be getting Ice Spawners on our SMP server. If you want to check that out, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will link our latest SMP video at the end of this one. I hope you find this video useful. If you did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thanks very much for watching everyone. I've been Hellfire Mage and I will see you next time.